Hi everyone, my name is Michael. I'm the customer success lead at Xano. And today I'll be doing a video to show you how to connect Xano with a partner of ours, which is React Studio. Now React Studio is a visual front end builder that spits out clean React code. So let's get started. I'm gonna jump over to Xano and I'll go through the jumpstart wizard. I'll hit get started. I'll name my workspace today. We're gonna to be doing a simple restaurant application uh, where you can get more details on different restaurants that maybe are in your area. So I'll go ahead, I'll just call this um, React Studio, we'll say restaurants. And I'll hit continue. We'll start from scratch. And here I'll set up uh, a couple database tables. I'll have a user table, and then I'll just have a restaurants table. And that'll hold this information of the different restaurants uh, that we're gonna see. And then here I'll set up uh, that I'll auto generate my CRUD API endpoints for my tables. I'll hit next. I'll select email as a login and I'll go to my database and right away I'll jump into my restaurants table and let's add some data here. So I'm gonna add a new column up here. It'll be a text field and I'll just call this the restaurant name. I'll do another text field and I'll just call this uh, maybe a description of my restaurant. And then I'll also do, let's do an image here. So I'm gonna go to storage and then image metadata, and I'll call this image. And maybe I'll do one more text field here, and I'll just call this the address of the image. So let's go ahead, I'll add in a restaurant here, and I'm gonna call this uh, Cruiseburg. And this is a coffee shop that I like. And then I can actually pull up an image here, and we'll just call this cafe right here. And the address, I'll just say something like 123, uh, maybe Bean Street. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some more records here, but I'll skip ahead. All right, so as you can see, I added a few more restaurants here. I uh, added a little more of a detailed description to each. They all have images and an address. So let's go ahead and plug this into React Studio and start sending this data to our front end. So I'm gonna pull up React Studio here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create a new project. And once React Studio opens, you'll see we have a couple different tabs. First being the project map, which is this nice visual canvas view of our front end. And then we also have this data tab. So here in the data tab, there's this button right here that says connect to Xano. So we have a direct integration, which is really great. So if I click this button, I already have my email and password here. I could also sign up to Xano uh, through React Studio, but I'm gonna go ahead and log in to connect my Xano account. And then I'm gonna select my instance. Then the workspace I want, which um, I have a ton. Mine is all the way off the screen called React Studio Restaurants. Finally, my API group and I check the boxes for whichever tables that I want to import here into React Studio uh, to use for my project. So I'll hit okay. And when I do that, I can go ahead and jump over to this restaurant sheet right here. And we can see here is um, my table of my restaurants that I just created in Xano. Um, and then anytime we might make some updates to our data, um, we can just hit this reload data from service button because it doesn't automatically do that in React Studio, um, just so we can get up to date there. So let's go back to my project map here. And the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna create a component here by just dragging this onto my canvas. So in React, everything is kind of um, contained within components. So I'm, I'll go ahead, I'll name this component. I'll just say um, restaurants, and I'm gonna go ahead and click in. And I'll go ahead, I'll say yes, add a background. Let me make this a little bit bigger just so I can work with here. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is display a list of our restaurants. Um, so first, you know, maybe I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna grab a landscape image here. And I'll say no, leave that as is. And I'm gonna drag this, just make this fit this screen a little bit better. Um, next, I'm gonna take some text here and maybe this is where uh, the name of our restaurant will be. We'll have a nice little description here. Um, I'll go ahead and the layout here, I'll make this uh, fit a little bit better. I'll say something like 10 and just minus 10 here. Um, and then also I want to go ahead and actually make this a headline. I want my name of the restaurant to be nice and big. Um, let's do another text here. I'll say no leave as is and this will be the description. I'll drag this a little bit lower. Uh, the layout, once again, I'll make that match up with the name, I'll say 10, and the right side will be minus 10 here. Um, and so now let's actually get um, 
some data for these um, restaurants here. So I'm gonna go ahead and link to existing properties right here at the top. I'm gonna drag the image right onto the image and that'll link the image from that restaurant table right there. And then I'm gonna drag the name to this header and I'll hit okay. And then finally the description uh, just right below and I'll hit okay. Okay, so that was pretty easy. So next I'll go back to my canvas and here on this first screen here, let me click in and I'm gonna drag a, a list grid view right here. Um, so let's go ahead and make this vertical and I'll have this fit the screen just a little bit nicer here. Uh, so this is nice and formatted. And next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to this data source here. And I'm gonna say, take items from a data sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and select that restaurants table. And now up here on these other tabs, I'm gonna go ahead and click nested component. Remember that component we just created that looks nice and pretty. I'll go ahead and select that as restaurants too. And now you can already see that that data is getting pushed through. And we're gonna have this nice list view. Um, this would be a mobile preview of our different restaurants. Okay, so now that we have the list view of our restaurants, let's take it one step further. Let's say that when a user clicks on one of these restaurants, they go to a page where they get even more details of the restaurant. For example, in our Xano database table, we also have the address of our restaurant, which isn't being displayed here on the list. So let's go ahead and set that up. Um, so when, when doing something like this, there's two ways to go about it. One is you could pass the data on the existing page to the next page. Um, but that wouldn't really serve us in this use case because we're not showing the address in our list. The other way is to uh, use the get record endpoint so that you can pull all the uh, data associated with a record and use it on the next page. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead to my data tab here. First thing I'm gonna do is add a slot here and you'll see why in a second, but it's basically going to act like a uh, dynamic variable for whichever record ID we want. So I'm just gonna call this maybe something like select details here. I'm gonna put a default value in here for now. I'm just gonna call that one. And next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new sheet. And this sheet is going to be called, uh, we'll say restaurant details. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And now on the right side where it says live data from web service, we've already made our Xano connection. So right here where it says Xano1, I'm just gonna select that. And we can ignore that error for now, but now underneath, remember we're gonna mimic that get restaurant endpoint. So right here it says API endpoint. So if I go back to Xano and look at this endpoint, it says slash restaurant slash restaurant ID. So back in React Studio, I'm gonna go ahead and type in slash uh, restaurants. And it's very important that I spell that correctly. And then another slash, but instead of the curly brackets in restaurant ID, I'm gonna add in that slot I just created, select details. And that'll allow the list page to pass in whatever record ID uh, we want to actually see. So if I actually hit enter now in that API endpoint, we'll be able to see here is our record ID one, which is Cruiseberg. And so we know that that API endpoint is working correctly. So let's go ahead and actually set this up on our front end. So in my project map, let's actually drag a responsive screen into here. And this will be the page that it goes to once it clicks. So let's click into here. And it's gonna look very similar to um, a single item from our list. We'll go ahead, we'll do a landscape um, image here. We'll next do a actually expanding text block. I'll drag that here. Um, I'll go ahead and say the layout is going to be 10 on the left. The right is uh, minus 10 element. Let's make sure to make this a headline. And then let's do another one here where our description will go. And then make sure the layout's nice. Right uh, minus 10. And then lastly, we'll have a third text block, which we didn't have before, and this will be the address. So the layout here will be 10 and just minus 10. So nothing new there. So now actually, when we link to existing properties here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull in the restaurant details, that new sheet I just created. So the image will go on the image, 
I'll hit OK. Uh, the name in this headline, I'll hit OK. And then the uh, address will be this bottom one. And then I got to get the description right in between there. OK, so now that we have all those set up, we're almost done. We still need to make it so um, the React Studio knows to pass in that record ID and also set up the click. So let's go back to the component. And we could do a button here. I like to make the image interactive so a user can just click on the image as the button. So I'm going to select the image here. I'm going to go to interact on the right side. And then I'll go ahead and select when a user taps. And I'll do save data. And then I'll select data slot. And then the data slot is going to be that um, select details, remember, sort of that variable I created. And the value of the component property is what I'm going to select. And I'm going to link it to um, the restaurant ID. OK? So now that we're passing the restaurant ID, there's one more thing that needs to happen when a user taps. So I'm going to hit plus here. And then I'm going to go to this two. And then I'm going to say go to. And it's going to be navigation target, which is called screen three, which is just that detailed view. OK? So when you see uh, now there is an arrow coming from the component to screen three. Um, so one last step, and then we're all done. We're ready to preview. I'm going to actually click on screen three. And this step's important. I'm going to go to data source, and I'm going to select carry properties from data sheet. And it's going to actually be, it's already selected, our restaurant uh, details. So now we're actually ready to go ahead, and I'm going to click open in web browser, and we can actually uh, go ahead and preview this and see what it's going to look like. So here, remember, we selected that mobile view. Um, we have it, we can even like minimize the screen so it looks a little bit better. But um, here is the list of our restaurants. And we can actually go ahead and click. And here is this detailed view, which includes our address. I'll go back and I'll show you it's dynamic. Now it actually goes with the associated restaurant. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, React Studio has um, included a whole series of multiple videos to give you some more in-depth skills and really um, show you how to use both tools uh, together, especially with stuff on the React Studio side. So I hope this video was helpful and uh, we're excited about the partnership. I'll see you in the next video.